Well, looky here, another Smash DLC. I wonder who it could ever be. I got an invitation to join Smash! Huh? Oh. I feel like I should have seen this coming. Yup, that's right. Pyra's in Smash Brothers. But not only that, alongside Mithra as well. Who are these people? In case you're unaware, like I was for the first half second of the trailer, they're from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I only add that first part in because I know there's quite a few Smash fans who haven't a clue what Xenoblade is or who these two characters are. I mean, there are probably still some people that didn't know where Shulk was from until he was in Pyra's trailer. This character is probably the least exciting for me at the moment. To have this right after Sephiroth feels kind of sad. But I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up in the first place. I'm no Xenoblade Chronicles fan, at least not of the sequel, but I know of its existence, and knowing that Nintendo wanted to put some kind of Xenoblade 2 character in there, and disconfirming Rex with their Mii Fighter costume, should have been an obvious red flag. But I never thought they'd actually do it. It felt like way too easy of a choice, and not much of a surprise. But not in the Crash Bandicoot way, you know what I mean? Crash Bandicoot also feels like an obvious choice, but he won't feel like an obvious choice until he actually shows up, which is what Crash fans are constantly on pins and needles about. But Pyra did feel like an obvious choice from the very beginning, and the fact that her and Blonde Friend are taking this long to show up, possibly stealing a slot from another potentially surprising character is kind of a weird feeling. And I only say they're stealing a slot, quote unquote, is because there's no confirmation for a third fighter's pass at the time of this recording. So we're kind of running out of space here. In all seriousness, I'm always happy to see new content. And looking back at the gameplay, Pyra and Mithra look interesting. So understand, viewer, you can be unhappy with the DLC, but don't bash other people for liking it, okay? Okay, enough rambling. Time to talk about the girlies. The trailer was probably the weakest aspect of the whole thing to me. So slow. Sure, the music was good and all, but I hardly know anything about Xenoblade to begin with. It felt like the climax of a romantic comedy film. One day, Pyra just disappeared. I couldn't find her anywhere. She vanished off the face of all rest. Without a trace. Where have you gone? I'll find you, whatever it takes. Really not much else to say about it, other than the disappointment I felt, because I got my hopes up for Crash, AGAIN! Two more slots left, so I'm still hoping for my man. Other than the cinematic part, the reveal of Mithra as the second half of the character was a pleasant surprise. But, eh, I don't know. I'll have to see how they play when they come out, whenever that is. Now then, time to list off the potential moveset thingies. In order, we have a taunt, either another taunt or an idle animation, a down air, an up tilt, dash attack, a back air, a forward smash, a neutral special, an up special, a side special, neutral air, back air, swap to Mithra, taunt, forward tilt, down air, grab plus back throw, neutral special, side special, which looks pretty cool. Two variations of the up special. Swap back to Pyra, down smash. Another taunt, forward air, down tilt, up air. Swap back to Pyra for the up air. Swap back to Mithra for the forward smash, up smash. Final smash for Mithra. And then Pyra's final smash. Another taunt. And then a taunt with Rex. I like the fact that both of them have separate final smashes, but let's focus. The swap move. I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be mapped to the down special instead of B-Wall shielding, because they didn't really do that for other characters that have that, like Pokemon Trainer. So I start with them. Also, that weird mention of Foresight in the trailer, it probably isn't gonna be a counter move like Shulk's, since it changed to a cinematic for that part. I'm guessing it'll either be like Bayonetta's weird bat dodge move when she dodges before getting hit, or Foresight's the name of the swap move. These two are looking like they're gonna have quite an interesting dynamic. Both will have different heights, weights, speeds, and jump heights and whatnot compared to each other. At least I hope so. So there'll be a reason to actually swap between the two. But the attacks don't look like they vary too, too much. Other than stats and whatnot. Not like two separate play styles or anything. I feel like it's gonna be the equivalent of swapping between an original fighter and their semi-clone, if that makes any sense. Oh, also Booba. The stage looks okay from what I've seen. 
The inclusion of guest characters is always fun, but I don't really know a lot about Xenoblade, so none of them get me all that excited. I like a few of them, though. These two I like. I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say maybe stuff will emerge from beneath the clouds and act as temporary platforms that swap out periodically. In other words, banned in competitive play, like every stage ever. Stage looks fun, I like the little old man. Moving on. When it comes to speculating spirits from a game I know next to nothing about, all I can really do is show you a handful of PNGs and move on to me fighter costumes. <laughs> Sorry. Since there's already some Xenoblade costumes in this game already, I assume they're going to slap some of the other characters from the game as fighter costumes. Or have some of the animal friends as hats. I don't know. Listen, I started making this video 10 minutes after the direct ended and I didn't have too much time to research anything. When it comes to third party Mii Fighter costumes, I really have no idea, since this is a Nintendo IP. They might bring back some of the old costumes that haven't shown up yet, but... I hope not. And now for the release date. The website says March, but I want to get more specific. I'm going to guess that the presentation is going to be... Mid-March. No, that's not specific enough. Uh, March 11th. And then Pyra and Mithra will drop a week later on the 18th. Ooh, I hope my guess is close. If it's not, uh, clown me in the comments or something. And that's really all I have to say about these two. I want to reiterate this, though. Don't be a dick to other people if they're super excited about this just because you're bummed out. That's about it for the Xeno Girls. So, my name is Goose, and I thank you for watching. Now go away.